welcome from the Manhattan Beach Community Church, an interfaith and interdenominational church at the crossroads of life. We bring you portions of the Sunday morning service from our beautiful sanctuary at 303 South Peck Avenue in the community of Manhattan Beach. We are glad you are joining us for this special service, and we hope it will be a source of inspiration and direction for you in the days ahead. We also invite you to join us in person this coming Sunday morning or any Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. For more information about the church and its wide-ranging programs, please feel free to contact the church office at 310-372-3587. And now, our Sunday morning service. We gather here in this welcoming sanctuary among friends, neighbors, and new faces. On this beautiful day, let us be mindful of why we are here, for fellowship, for strength, and to celebrate God's love. Let us pray. Dear Father, we come to you during this time of thanksgiving and gratefulness. Please bestow upon us the ability to recognize how fortunate we are and let us know the ways in which we can infuse this attitude in those around us. Use us, dear Lord, to thy good. Please hear us as we pray in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning.
There's a proverb which says, man proposes and God disposes. John proposed that I should give a sermon last week. But God disposes that I should be on antibiotics last week. So I had to stay home. But then graciously, John said, your sermon is still timely, so deliver it today. So here I am. And here is the sermon. Thank you, John. Thanksgiving is on its way. And in five days, we are going to sit down to beautifully laden tables for very sumptuous dinners with family and friends and send, say thank you to God for our abundance and the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. The ancient psalmist was a poet, and he wrote in one of his psalms the following words, to enter God's gates with thanksgiving and to be thankful and to praise God's name for the food that we have. In that spirit, President Lincoln proclaimed that uh, there should be a joyful expression of thanks on the fourth Thursday in November, and it should be a day of gratitude. So that's what's coming this coming Thursday, a day of gratitude. I always tell people that all we have to do is to go into a supermarket, go down the aisle, and see all these different items on the shelves, the abundance of choices that we have to get the produce that we want, the foods that we like, to our heart's content. And it's all there. And no wonder that so many people envy us on what we have and the blessings that we enjoy, the freedoms that we have. We can travel where we want to go. We can say what we want to say. We can listen to news from all over the world and nobody stops us. These are blessings that God gave us in the country in which we live and we have to be grateful for it and at least, at least once a year to express that gratitude so that people know that there is a prayer in our heart for that. But right now as I'm speaking, and you know it, there are economic troubles in the country and around the world. These are difficult economic times. People lost homes. There's downsizing everywhere which you hear about. Um, people lose their jobs. People are laid off. Um, the cost of living is going up. The airlines just announced that during the holiday period, the fares are going to go up. While at the same time, when all this is happening, many people go hungry. Many people go hungry in the midst of all this abundance that we have in, uh, around us. Recently, we were told that in Los Angeles alone, in our city, in Los Angeles alone, I'm saying it slowly so that you get it in your mind and in your heart. In Los Angeles alone, one million people are hungry. One million people are hungry in Los Angeles alone. Imagine the number. One million people don't have enough to eat in the midst of all this abundance that we have and the plenty that is available to all of us. Churches and temples in the Los Angeles area were asked recently to uh, contribute any kind of food for the hungry. In my own temple, we have collected about 130, 140 pounds of canned food to give the hungry people. They don't have enough to eat. 
and according to a new report published this past Wednesday by UNICEF, um, nearly 200 million children around the world are stunted in their growth because of lack of nutrition and insufficient nutrition. 200 million children are stunted in their growth because they don't have enough to eat. And the head of the United Nations Food Agency called on the world to join him in a day of fasting to highlight the plight of one billion people around the world who don't have enough to eat. So come this Thanksgiving, remember the hungry and do something, do your turn to uh, mark that day with gratitude and blessings and help for those who don't have enough to eat. Way back in the 1940s and the 1950s, there was a custom to put a plaque of a smiling cat in the window of a house where people who are homeless, where a homeless person can find a meal to eat. So that was a sign, you're welcome to come and eat in my home. So a little girl by the name of Rachel, her grandparents were just blocks away from a train station where they would often see homeless men and women mingling with other people or waiting for the train. And uh, Rachel's grandfather usually asked one of the homeless men to help him in the yard and he would pay him something so they would have some income by doing the work. And while this was happening, her grandmother was in the kitchen preparing breakfast for the homeless person. And one day, she picked up a beautiful tablecloth and the breakfast and all the groceries that went into it and went out into the yard and spread it on the uh, picnic table for the homeless person to have a, a bite of food to eat breakfast. And when uh, Rachel saw her, how her grandmother is fussing over this homeless person, she asked um, her grandmother, she said, Grandma, why are you fussing over this homeless person? And grandma answered, and these are her words, somewhere out there he has a family that's missing him. So a kind word, a little food, is least that anybody can do and offer someone who has lost his way in life. A kind word or a little food can help somebody. So Rachel saw how her grandparents treated the homeless people they treat them with dignity and with compassion and never judging them, never asking them who they were and where they came from. So the folk proverb which says, uh, you cannot put a great hope into a small soul. You cannot put a great hope into a small soul. The soul has to be magnanimous in order to feel the need. So this season of gratitude, let our souls not be small but be great and to remember that there are other people who would like to have the blessings that we have and join us. I found in the book of Matthew in the New Testament um, that during the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread and the wine cup and gave thanks first. And then after he said thank you to God, he gave this to his disciples. And in the um, 
epistle to the Colossians, Paul said, and I quote him, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant with thanksgiving. Being vigilant in it and th with thanksgiving. And his epistle to Timothy, he said, foods which God hath created are to be received with thanksgiving. Foods which God hath created are to be given with thanksgiving. In other words, what we are, we are mandated people to be generous. We are mandated people by the holy books to be giving people and helping other people in time of need. So this year especially, because of the prevailing economic uh, conditions, this Thanksgiving season will be a good occasion to fulfill our mandate to remember the hungry. So a can, two cans, whatever you can, help out. Two of the simplest words in English language are thank you. We learn to say thank you very early in life. It's something we are expected to say if we are at least half civilized people. Our parents taught us that if somebody gives you something or if somebody does something for you, you say thank you. And that's implanted in our hearts, that's in us. So a rabbinic colleague once told us that he got a speeding ticket from a police officer. And as the officer gave him the ticket, he said, thank you. <laughs> and then he thought to himself, he says, why in the world did I say thank you? <laughs> he just gave me a ticket my, my uh, driver's license will be impacted. My insurance rates will go up. It will cost me money, and I said thank you for that. But it just came out because this was the training that his parents gave him. There was no question about saying thank you to somebody no matter what they give you to express that gratitude. These two words just came out of his mouth. So even if we do not give these words a great deal of thought, I say, we have to be disciplined to give thanks anyway. Because giving thanks is an attitude. It's an attitude in life that awakens in us a sense of satisfaction. Something is glowing inside when we feel good when we appreciate somebody doing something for us. The one American custom rooted in the Bible is thanksgiving. The pilgrims knew scripture very well. And they knew that ancient people of Bible times used to have a uh, holiday when fall came, when harvest was collected, they expressed their gratitude at fall arrival for the bounties of nature that God granted. And so they adopted that festival, and it became a festival of thanksgiving for their celebration as a model and eventually, over the generations, came down to us. And now it's an accepted fact that on the fourth Thursday in November, we say thank you to God for the blessings which we have. Thank God. Also, the celebration of Thanksgiving reminds us not to take anything in life for granted. Because we never know. Life is too fragile. Too often we assume that we are the source of success and all the, our abilities created our success and all that. But when I say thank you to you, all of a sudden I realize that I'm dependent on other people too, not only on myself. So I have to express that gratitude to somebody who is 
at my side whenever I need. If you want to understand gratitude, then you ought to talk to somebody who's just recovered from a medical crisis. In a medical crisis, that which was a very simple functioning of the body stopped. Something went wrong, and it was a medical crisis. And then the recovery came. And when the recovery came, what was taken for granted suddenly became a precious gift, a precious gift of health. And an expression, thank God, came to the lips. That's why religious tradition keeps reminding us to feel that sense of gratitude each and every day and every hour of the day that we live. Helen Keller, you know that name. She once said, she was blind. She said, it would be a blessing if each human being was blind or deaf for a few days because darkness would make them appreciative of sight and silence would teach them the joys of sound. What she really said is what we take for granted becomes a precious gift and we ought to cherish it and appreciate it. Some time ago I read about uh, a custom in Japan where people may be invited for a moon viewing party. No one is expected to say anything during that party. We just sit and watch the beautiful moon and we appreciate the bright luminosity of the night when the, the moon is full and it's bright and we kind of see a face on the moon when we look at it. And some Japanese homes even have a window, a special window, a moon viewing window, which uh, people use to experience that profound appreciation of the majesty of nature during daytime and nighttime as well. But from the biblical sources that I quoted to you just a moment ago, uh, we know that not only the Japanese people, but we too, all of us, were uh, told to be grateful people and to appreciate the wonderful blessings that are ours. Not only food, but beauty around us at all times that awakens in us a spiritual sense of being appreciative of what we have. And we say, thank God, thank God. Thanksgiving is also a foundation and basis for moral responsibility. If we have bodies that are a gift, we must not abuse our body. If the earth is granted to us by God as on a loan to be stewards of the world, of the earth, and be watching carefully what's happening to it, then if the earth is not ours, then we must think about using it and abusing it as it happens so frequently in life. Think of, as I was writing the sermon, I was thinking um, of all the people we never thank. Did you ever think about that? Of all the people we never thank. So I made a little list here. We never thank the reapers who reap the harvest. We never see them. We don't know who they are. They reap the harvest. We never thank the people in the mill who grind the harvest into flour. We never thank the people who take the flour and bake it into bread. We never thank the people who take that bread and deliver it to the supermarket and put it on the shelf so you and I can buy it. We don't know who they are. 
We never thank the per- people who pick up the refuse in front of our house. Did you ever go out to say thank you to people in the truck? Or how often do we say thank you to somebody in the post office or in the bank? See, there's so many people that we never thank. And we ought to, but we don't see them. We don't know who they are. So there has to be gratitude in the heart that's an energy that's flowing to them, and they know that people appreciate what they do and what their job is. So I say that there is something to be said for using those two simple words that could mean so much to another person. Thank you can give somebody a sense of validation, that they mean something, that they are worthwhile. And uh, that can be a precious gift to a person who doesn't have it very often. Or it can change somebody's day. Last week, on my way to see the doctor, I was approaching the building and was just about to grab the handle of the door to open it up. And an older gentleman was coming toward me, a black man on a cane. And as he was coming to me, I opened the door for him and I said, after you, sir. He crossed the threshold and he turned around and he said to me, thank you, you made my day. I had tears in my eyes. I touched somebody with a tiny bit of kindness. It meant something to that person, and I'll never forget it. So as Thanksgiving is coming and is nearing with the celebration of our blessings, let's remember all these other people that are around us who don't have enough to eat, and they wish that our blessings would be theirs as well. So if we do that, then Thanksgiving will be an open door to a holiday season for everybody, and that season will never be forgotten. So let's resolve this morning, a Sunday before Thanksgiving, to keep our hearts filled with gratitude and joy for the abundance and the blessings that are around us in the midst of which we live. And to all of you, I say, happy Thanksgiving and the merriest of holiday seasons to you and to yours. And God bless you. Have joy and health in the next few months. God bless you. And to that you say, amen.
We are pleased that you have joined us for the Sunday morning service from the Manhattan Beach Community Church, an interfaith and interdenominational congregation. We hope that the music and the spoken word have lifted your spirits and have offered guidance and a sense of direction for your life. Have a wonderful week.